morning to our agents and good evening to the Lakeland team. We hope all of you and your near and dear ones are in good health. I'm Radha, admission support for Lakeland College. A very warm welcome to the Lakeland College Agent E-Summit session live 2021. Thank you so much for connecting with us today. You are here with the Lakeland team and we will ensure that this session will certainly add value to your knowledge and experience for Lakeland College. Lakeland College, the only bi-provincial college located in Alberta and Saskatchewan, Lakeland offers a UG program, including a one-year certificate and two-year diploma programs. Our most popular programs for international students are in the field of business, environmental sciences, human services, health and wellness, interior design, energy and petroleum engineering, and agriculture science. But in Jan 2022 intake, we offer the most popular business administration program with three majors, business administration, general major, business administration, accounting major, business administration, small business and entrepreneurship. Our academic requirements, maths is mandatory for all the business programs, 50% and more in the latest education, for diploma gap not more than two years. IELTS requirements, a minimum score of six overall with at least six on each band and we do accept TOEFL, PTE and Duolingo. Regarding the special admission test, so in case if the student do not have the mathematics in their academic subjects, then they can go ahead and take the mathematics test. That email will be sent by our Lakeland team and they will also provide you the options, two options. So you can, student can select one option and then they can give the test. So the test, uh, the test cost 25 USD and then we have our fee structure, application fee 90 Canadian dollars and our fee for business program 17,000 Canadian dollars. I request all of you to write your Q&A, sorry, questions in Q&A window and team will be answering them at the end of the session. We are very excited to take this webinar forward. This session will be further taken care by the Lakeland team. And we have our team here, Paul, Chelsea, Shahad, Jill Applegate. So I hand over it to Paul Astrowski. Hi, Paul. Uh, hello. Uh, good evening, everybody here on this on this side. And uh, good good morning to all of you in a different time zone, perhaps most most perhaps in India, etc. Et um, thank you, uh, Rad Radha, for the warm wel welcoming. And uh, it's very nice to be able to communicate with all of you overseas about uh, Lakeland program offerings for specifically for January, as that is the most, it's the next intake after September, which is a little bit uh, um, dynamic. So January is looking very sta stable as a semester in intake, as well as September 2022 intake. So as Rada men mentioned, in January 2022, we uh, predominantly offer three majors in our biz business program, which is our most solid program for international students. And uh, we'd like to touch a little bit about our offerings for September as there is a little bit more um, options available on both of our camp campuses. So as you may or may not know, Lakeland College is a very, is a pretty old, uh, in, a good, in a good way, uh, college, uh, pub publicly fun funded college over a hundred years old. Uh, our initial campus was on the, is Vermilion, located in a town of Vermilion, which is not huge, but very co cozy, very nice, very great for the programs it offers agriculture, environmental sciences, human ser services. For those programs, you cannot be in a city for ag sciences, for environmental sciences. It just doesn't make, make sense. Uh, our newer campus, I, 
I might be wrong here, but I think it was low, it was opened in the early 80s or the lit, the mid to late 70s uh, in Lloydminster. Uh, there we offer our business programs, university transfer programs, and heavy oil power engineering pro, uh, programs. As you might see from the line here, the interesting, if you can see Verm Vermilion on the left, and then you see Lloydminster on the right, you'll see one has a dotted line. One does not have a dotted line. Those are roads. Um, the significance of the dotted line is that is the border between Alberta and Saskatchewan, which, which uh, apparently should show you that Lloydminster is a bi-provincial city, the only bi-provincial city in Canada, and obviously then the only bi-provincial city with a publicly funded post-secondary DLI approved uh, college campus, which makes us different than any other inst institution, is that we are not only tied to Alberta, we are tied to Saskatchewan as well. And that's quite important when it comes time, uh, should you meet all the requirements, which most of our students do, to access postgraduate work permit opportunities and then permanent residency sponsorship opportunities in either Alberta or Saskatchewan, depending on what your education is and depending on the job opportunities. So we always encourage students and the government does too. If you are in business, you should take a, you should get a job in business. If you get a job in human services, you should probably get a job in human services. You get a job in agriculture, or sorry, you do your education in agriculture, you should get a job in agriculture. Because the government, the way they do uh, provincial spo sponsorship is based on industry need. So they look at the students in the fields and the jobs that are needed and the industries that are needed and want to uh, follow students that way. Not so, not so much where a student studies, let's say power engineering, and then tries to get a job at a, as a learning assistant. Uh, the government didn't, that's not exactly what they want to uh, do. So anyway, the main point is that Lakeland offers opportunities on both sides of a border of two provinces that do very well economically, don't have a large, large population. So uh, job opportunities are good. Taxes are lower. Alberta doesn't even have a provincial tax. And uh, Alberta has the highest uh, wage for students and um, the minimum wage in the country at $15 an hour, which is great for students who get to work 20 hours a week while they fulfill their, du their duties as a full-time student. And they get to be full-time pretty much as much as you want to work during the gaps, during vacations, uh, which is very significant given that there is at least a week in, Feb in February, two, three weeks in, Dece in December, and May, June, July, August, half of April, another 18 weeks. So you're looking at 21, 22 weeks a year, you can work full time. So you wanna do that at a decent wage in a place where that maybe they're gonna count that experience towards your postgraduate work permit hours already as an in-province grad graduate. Okay, next slide, please. So I have already, uh, Okay, the best of two provinces. Uh, Lakeland College is not a huge co college, uh, which we like because we are able to offer. I mean, look at the look at the classroom there on the on the top right. That is a typical classroom setting. I can see one, two, three, four, five, six, 10 students, eleven students, perhaps there in the picture. So you get a lot more attention to detail, uh, attention to your instructor's detail. Uh, so it's a really good learn, learning environment. Next slide, please. Paul, this was the next slide. 
Give me just one second. Okay. And okay. I thought my battery had had died and I I thought my battery had a lot more power and it did. So I'm not sure what happened there, but we're back. We're back here. Uh, so uh, as a smaller college industry driven, our region, what drives our region is oil, agriculture, environment, and with that comes business because it's all related to business. And then with that, you have fam families and kids that need care. So our programs, you can be confident that we are gearing our programs directly to jobs because that's our man mandate as a college, not necessarily as a university to create uh, opportunities for necessarily focusing on higher learn learning and research though we do do a ton of research as, as, as well. Our, our mandate is in employment. So we work closely with local industry, which you may under, which you may look at why, how come Lake Plan doesn't provide computer engineering? There's, well, this is not the Silicon Valley of Ca Canada. Uh, why are there not big programs in hospitality? Well, we're not exactly in the Rocky Mountains. We're accessible, but not in the Rocky Mountains. So anyway, our jobs are tied. Our programs are tied directly to jobs because we work very closely with uh, industry. And getting a job in your field is so important for your permanent residency pathway. So that's why Lakeland's a very, very good choice for that, for AINP, SINP, very safe uh, driving, uh, yeah. Next, next slide, please. Okay, so just to follow up here, there's gonna, one of these is gonna come out newer eventually. This is 2017, but it still is re relevant. Uh, so you can see at the top here, I'll read a little bit. 40,000 students, 55 different categories, 63 colleges across Canada. They did a poll to see about rankings. What's 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 important to students? Uh, so there were fifty five categories. So we did well in some of them. Uh, I think we did well on some of the most important ones. Number one, college most recommended by students out of colleges in Canada. Uh, we are not the most well known college in Canada, but what we find is once students come to our college. They really like like it. They like that we have time for them. Our programs are specific. Uh, we're not huge. The students feel more like a like a a big fish in a small pond instead of a small fish in a big pond. So the first college most recommend most recommended by students. That's that's very uh, uh, it's very important to us. Number two, best overall val value. What does that mean, best overall value? Well, how much you spend before, uh, and in turn, what your education gave you back. What did you want for your education? How much did it cost? Did you get it? Second best overall value for, for that. Whether it's permanent res residency, whether it's to go back home and use the great programs you learned here to better your province back at home in, in, in your country. I mean, value is self-determined. Uh, second, happiest students. Recommendation number one, value two, happy students two. I think this is attributed to us having a smaller college where our instructors and our coordinators, our managers, our senior le leadership team, they truly care. Uh, we are small enough that we are not so caught up in the hustle and bustle of everyday uh, growth and struggling to meet budgets or to keep up that we focus on happy students because happy students recommend friends and then students see value in that. Next slide, please. Okay, so I'll touch briefly on the on the campuses here, and then I'll pass it off to other members of my team to talk more about programs, or if they would like to contribute more to something perhaps I've missed about these Lloyd Minster camp campuses. But I think I said be before that Verm Vermilion was our first campus, 1913. It's a really nice camp campus. The residences look like kind of Greek uh, uh, 
um, houses for you know college kids in the, in the U.S. and so on. It's quite cute. And our Lloyd Minster camp. So we have uh, availability for res residents on both. I we have a little bit more capacity on our Lloyd Minster campus than on our Vermilion campus because our Vermilion campus is houses a little bit. Well, you see at this at this time two two thousand compared to. 854, so perhaps two to one. Maybe, maybe these days with the pan, pandemic, it's gonna be maybe 1.5 to one, but there's better opportunities in Lloyd for house, housing. Um, I have to be honest with you, Lloyd Minster is a larger economy. So there are more jobs in Lloyd Minster than there are in Vermilion. We still have a very high uh, student employ employment rate. And given that you can only work 20 hours a week as you are a student, with it being 35 minutes between campuses, it's very conceivable you live in Vermilion and you get a job in Lloyd and on the weekends, you do your 20 hours there and you keep your weekdays free for, for studying. Lots of our students have cars, excuse me. <clears throat> and so there's a lot of car pooling uh, and so on. So just know that if you're in Vermilion, you could still work in Lloyd Minster. And 35 minutes, I've been to, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna guess where our student body in this, in this web, webinar is from, but I'm gonna predict mostly India, maybe some uh, African countries. I've been to both more than once and thir 35 minutes to get to your workplace is not an, is not an issue. Uh, considering when in Lagos or if you're in Delhi or if you're in Lud Ludiana, even P Patiala, and you're in traffic for hours to go a few kilometers. So anyway, let's see what the next slide is. And I believe it may be time for me to pass it off. Okay, anyway, thank you very, very much. And I will leave it to Chelsea, Jill and Jahat to further talk about our specific programs and some of the services and uh, things that we do for our, our student to help them on their journey to, to Lakeland and on the journey after Lakeland as well. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Paul. I think I'm just gonna go back to the previous slide. Just um, we are looking to recruit right now um, the business program is our next one coming up um, in January, but also wanted to let everybody know about the other full time programs that um, applications will be opening October 1st for fall 2022 so on the Lloyd Minster campus, we do have the um, our energy programs and our business programs, um, so we have. Um, certificates and diplomas we offer. Um, we also have a post-credential certificate, um, which I'll touch on on the Vermilion campus. So in Vermilion, as Paul mentioned, um, that is our, um, like our first, our first campus, which is really rich, um, of course, in the field of agriculture. So we have certificates and diplomas in our field of agriculture. We have a new diploma within that school, as well as a post-credential. So um, that one would be available for students who already have education. So we value that you've probably taken maybe a degree in your home country and um, you've had a lot of experience in that field. So um, admission for that program is a little bit different where we do require a four year degree WES assessment. Um, but um, I welcome you to email me and then I can provide you some more um, information on that program. And on Vermilion, this is where we offer our human services, interior design and environmental sciences as well. Um, we have practicums that we offer in human services, interior design and the School of Agriculture and hoping over the next few years that all of our programs will actually offer practical experiences in them as well. Um, so if anyone else has anything to add there, we can move on to business. Okay. Okay, I'll hand this over to Chelsea and Chahat. I can start. So um, 
Chahat's actually one of our alumni, so she'll be able to speak a little bit more about um, the perks of taking the business program. But I can just chat quickly about um, what is coming up for our winter intake. So that starts January 7th and applications are open right now. So if you are interested in coming, you do have some time there to apply and also get your postgrad or your study permit. Um, so the program that's offered in January is our business administration program, and that's a two year diploma. Um, the nice thing about that program is there's a couple different options for what you're going to study in. So if you just want to do a general business, which kind of covers a little bit of everything you see listed there, that's a great program to go to. Um, there's our accounting program that's more numbers focused. And if you're looking at running your own business and want a better idea of, you know, taking track and taking care of the numbers, you can do that. Um, we have the small business entrepreneurship. So if you're starting your own business, it's another great one to get into. Our real estate appraisal and assessment is um, one we've seen a couple of our students really thrive from. It's um, kind of a niche uh, area here in Canada that there's not a lot of people that do take that course. So the jobs are sometimes in high demand in some capacity. So you would be looking at working with municipalities or being contracted out to different real estate brokerages. And there's a couple of different opportunities there. And then we do have administrative professional certificate, which does not run in January, but that's in September and that's just a one year program. Um, and that gives you with a lot of foundation to to work in a business as either just an administrative role, you know, reception, some sort of office coordination. There's a lot of different potential with that program as well. So I'll pass it over to Chahat, who is one of our alumni, and she can discuss some of the perks of going to Lakeland and taking our business programs. Thanks, Chelsea, and hello, everyone. Um, I am alumni. I started working here um, while I was studying, so it's been over seven years. Um, why take business with us? We have various business clubs. Um, our business program is really hands-on. Um, we also have flexible delivery of, of, you can study online or in person. Um, the business department also hosts um, various employment fairs where you meet um, real uh, employers and you get to make connections with them and possibly get a job. Uh, our students also run student run. Uh, our students also run text clinics. So um, uh, we also have fashion on budget show where you get um, you know fifteen dollars and you need you get to buy your business attire. So it's a challenge, which is good. Um, there are also case competitions. And we have a union speakers corner, so students are encouraged to do public speaking. Next slide. Oh, okay. Um, and what kind of jobs can you get after studying or after getting a credential from here? You can be supervisor, manager, realtor, accountant, banker, um, or work in education field, or we can also have, um, you can also be entrepreneur. Our students start earning um, from 45,000 per year to also, um, which goes up until early, you know, early 90s. Um, few other programs that we offer at, um, at Lloydminster campus is um, heavy oil and also aesthetician and clinical aesthetician. But these programs are only offered in September. Okay. Jill, do you want to talk about residents? Sure, I can. Um, so as Paul mentioned before, we do offer residents on both campus. Um, 
very, very close to the campus. It's within walking distance. Um, as you know, sometimes our Canadian winters can get very chilly. So um, it is really nice to be able to just um, wake up in the morning, walk um, to class, um, and it takes you about five minutes. Um, our residence is very affordable. Um, it is really nice for relationship building and getting to know people. Um, you know, the homesickness and the culture shock that people um, do experience when they come here um, and leave their families behind can be quite significant. So it is really nice to be with other people who are in your program um, that you're able to, you know, cook and eat with and study together and, um, and get to know other people. Um, so, so once a student is accepted to Lake Lawn College, then, um, then we do email you our online um, application form. So you're able to apply after. Um, we actually have really great virtual tours as well on our website. So you're able to actually um, like look into the rooms and kind of see what uh, the campus grounds look like as well. <clears throat> So the process of applying at Lakeland is really is really quite simple, and it really is our team that you're dealing with. So the people that you're you're seeing tonight speak directly to you. It really is us that you're that you're dealing with. So you know we we always encourage students to really get to know our program. So of course business is our the next one that we're looking uh, for the intake. But really go on our website and look at the different programs. Um, check out our student stories and our YouTube channels as well. Um, after you apply on applyalberta.ca, which is our provincial um, post-secondary system, um, you're going to send your documents to us. So that will be sent to us in an email for us to assess. Um, as Dorada mentioned earlier, um, if you don't meet the admission requirements, then we'll communicate that with you really quickly so that you can get started on our entrance testing. Um, you also have access to the free modules so that if you want to brush up on, on the information before you write the exam, um, you're welcome to do that. We want students to be as successful as possible, so our team will help you um, you know, go the best route um, that's best for you. Um, and then as soon as you meet all the requirements, then we're able to issue you a letter of acceptance within three to five business days. Um, so it really is quite simple. Um, we try and make it as simple as we can, of course. Um, Chahat, did you wanna talk about this one? Sure. Um, you can connect with us through various um, streams. We have a public page uh, on Facebook. Uh, we have Instagram account, Twitter, or you can follow us on TikTok. I, I think TikTok is banned in India. Um, another option is Snapchat. Um, and I'll just add to that, we do have our, our international student Facebook page. So when you're coming and you want to get connected before you start, then, then that's the place that you can do that. As well, we also have our Lakeland College app. So it's another avenue. You can download the app from, um, from any of the app stores on your cell phone, and then you're able to get connected that way as well. <clears throat> So this is our contact information. Um, we don't expect you to phone us, but our international at lakelandcollege.ca email um, is kind of the one place um, that you can get a hold of any of us. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, this was a, a very, a concise but very very informative, I think, uh, talk we've had here about our pro programs. So just to uh, review, Lakeland's got a great location in terms of economy, in terms of opportunities for a province to sponsor you for uh, after studies pathway pro programs. Uh, our programs, our college is geared directly to jobs, which is what you need if if that is your plan is to try to stay, which is what the government wants if you fulfill the requirements and are in a field that 
is in need. Uh, so there's a lot of opportunity, there's a lot of quality, and there's a lot of affordability with our prices in town of not being as expensive as a bigger city, our residence prices being maybe the best in the country. I, I haven't seen much better than that, but uh, besides, besides that, quality, opportunity, affordability, a very uh, dedicated team, small student to uh, staff to support ratios, uh, just a really good uh, spot for your, for your future plans. Chelsea, uh, Jill, Jihad, I'm not sure if you want to add anything before Rada takes over the Q, the uh, Q and Q and A's, which tend to grow as we answer. So, <laughs> I'll I'll quickly add. Um, I'm also at Lakeland College. I was a student as well, but I did it all through the online program, um, which is not available for international students. But um, it is a fantastic school to attend. The instructors take a lot of time to get to know you personally and pay a lot of attention so you feel really connected to what you're learning and it makes showing up every day to class a lot more enjoyable so i i can attest to it being a fantastic school to attend as well Okay, I think having said said that, thank thank you very much, Chels. Uh, Rada, I think we're ready for the for the Q and A's. Uh, thank you so much uh, for the informative uh, you know session today, Paul, Jill, Chelsea, Chahad. We are very thankful to you. Uh, hi, agents. As I have requested, please uh, you know drop your questions in Q and A window. Okay, we start answering over there. Okay. Um, so here is the first question. Good morning, concern. Uh, kindly name the new program which you launch now. So that would be our agriculture sustainability program. So it's a two year diploma program in the School of Agriculture. It's brand new. <laughs> okay, and this is available in September intake. Am I right, Jill? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, thank you. And so the yeah. admission requirements for that is our English, math, and our grade um, 11 science. All right, thank you. And please tell us about the provincial nominee programs. Okay. I can talk about the provincial nominee programs. Basically, provincial nom nominee programs are one way, I think it's part of what is called the Opportunity Stream in Alberta, Strategic Student Stream in Saskatchewan. Essentially, they are, they are the same, same things. It means that you should, Chah Chahat, Jill, uh, Chelsea, you correctly, correct me if I'm wrong, you need 960 hours of work experience or how many hours work experience before you can apply for PNP uh, through one of these programs. But basically the essence is the province sponsors you to the province sponsors you before, before you apply to express entry. Only the government can grant permanent residency status but provinces can aid that process by sponsoring you saying you have completed an education in the province, you have completed a requisite number of hours in the province and your education is in a field that is in demand. So uh, do you have to use AINP, which means Alberta Immigration Nom Nominee Program to get permanent residency? Nope. Do you have to use uh, SINP, Saskatchewan Immigration? Nope, but it's a lot easier uh, because because you have because you have an education in the prov in the province, you get enough hours where with your previous language IELTS at least a six point zero or it's switching a little bit to TOEFL now as well. Uh, that with those points you are already at near the top of the 
And also with Near education. The top of the pool. Near the top of the and educate education lang language work experience, uh, education at home, your home country and education here. It puts you at the top of the pool that when the government does their monthly scoop, <laughs> you are at the near the top because the government cannot accept all applicants. They accept the top applicants. So you have to look at what gives you points to put you at the top. And in education in, in Canada gives you the highest points out of anything else. Uh, the government is looking to recruit people to come to Canada for a long time, provided they are experienced, they have education. Uh, our population is, compared to the number of, our taxpayers compared to the number of people retiring is lowering, which, which is not great for an agent. Like Japan's gonna have this problem. South Korea is having this problem. Canada's having this problem where our, our, uh, our youth is, we don't have a lot of youth as compared to other countries. So uh, if you would like to know more about AINP or SINP, you can email us, or I encourage you to go online and just search AINP, SINP for students, and you will see all the current relevant rules as they may change uh, from semester to semester, month to month, depending on what the government deems is needed by, in, by uh, in industry, which is why it's important kind of at Lakeland College that you have Alberta and Saskatchewan. If that's, Alberta that's goes to- what, That's what I actually want to add. Um, most of you know that with provincial nomination, you get 600 points with, um, you know, when entering an express entry. And I would like to share my experience. So back in 2015, when we were applying for permanent residency, um, Saskatchewan, uh, they closed the SINP program for few months and what my colleagues or you know my friends did back then was they applied into Alberta or, or actually it was the other way around Alberta closed uh, AINP for a couple of months so they switched to Saskatchewan so this is the benefit that you get with Lakeland Credential you can either go in uh, go for AINP or SINP so which is a big win-win for students. And I'll just add a little bit, Chad. I do, I, I do remember that that time. It was, it was quite uh, interesting. And you might ask, why did they change the rules? Why did Alberta suddenly? Oh, there was an election. There was an election, and a different government came in. There's liberal governments. There's conservative governments. There's ultra conservative governments, and there's ultra liberal governments. And each of them can play with the immigration rules provincially. There doesn't have to be a, fed, a federal election. Uh, Canadian education is set provincially. So every time there's a provincial election, and the province maybe changes the government from really this way to really this way, the rules about permanent residency can change really this way, really this way. And as Char had stated, what happened at her time was the conserv the, I think it was the, what is called the New Democratic Part Party, NDP got voted out and the Conservative Party got voted in. And the first thing the Conservative Party did was say, stop, stop, uh, stop bringing in new, res new residents until they had a chance to rethink that and said, okay, wait, we actually need, need this. <laughs> so that's, that's why it's important because uh, you might wonder, well, who makes the, does, does Lakeland make the rules? Does the Ministry of Education make the uh, rules? No, nope, it's the government in power and that changes in the elections. So, okay, I think we can move right up to the next question about maths. Yeah, it is well explained by Paul and Chahad, really. Dorish, I think um, you understood uh, what they are trying to say. And also, if you still have any more question, you're free to email us and I will forward the same to them and they can explain you well, okay? Thank you. And now uh, we have the next question. Is maths required for every program? 
Uh, Jill, Chelsea, I mean, I can I can answer this. I, uh, usually for most, but there are a few not, I believe, human services, but you can uh, chime in and add. Yeah, no, that's correct. So all of our programs do require um, some level of maths. Um, our human services, the admission requirement is grade 12 English, no math. Our health and wellness. Thank you. Oh. Yeah, sorry. Perhaps that as well. On, on, our, uh, on our Lloydminster camp campus, we do have a health and wellness uh, pro program, which you should really read into detail ab about as it's maybe a short, a shorter program might not grant you a three year postgraduate work permit in rather grant you a one year postgraduate work permit, which might not be exactly what you want, because as you may know, a certificate gives you a one year certificate gives you one year postgraduate, a two year diploma gives you uh, typically three years of, of working time to get your affairs in order to do your paperwork. Thank you, Paul. Is there any PG program available? Jill? Well, Jill, uh, Jill, Jill and Chelsea, there are, a, there are a couple, I think, agriculture programs that require a degree, which would make it a postgraduate, but Yeah, so we do have two different programs in the School of Agriculture. So one is a post-credential. Um, the other one is post-graduate. Um, I'm not able to get on to um, actually look at the specifics, um, but you are required to have um, a diploma or a degree. The easiest way to get into the program is if you do the program first in Canada. So in Alberta at one of our um, at one of the schools um, in Alberta and then transfer to Lakeland. And then the other one, like I mentioned, it's post-credential. So you have to have your international education assessed by WES and it has to be equivalent to a four-year degree. But of course, if you want to email, we'll send you some, um, some more information. And our Lloydminster campus does not have any postgraduate programs, it's just those two that Jill just mentioned in Vermilion. And I would just like to add quick, quickly that uh, whether it's a diploma or whether it's a postgraduate diploma does not affect the length of time that you will get for a postgraduate work, work permit. A two-year diploma from Lakeland, a two-year postgraduate diploma from an Ontario college will give you the same three years. There is one just has a higher entrance stand, standard. Uh, Alberta is different than uh, Ontario. Alberta government uh, Ministry of Education believes postgraduate education is more suited towards universities. Colleges are more suited towards employment, which is why you will find the majority of of institutions in Alberta don't offer postgraduate work, work permits because it's not really the mandate of Alberta coll colleges to provide education upon education. Uh, it's to provide education and jobs. So. Uh, well, thank you, Paul. I have one question additional to the same uh, question. In case if any uh, student, uh, I mean, who completed, as Jill mentioned, four year, uh, you know, degree in uh, agriculture for a post graduation diploma, also he is working, he or she. So can they go ahead and apply for this uh, diploma? Do we have any challenges to uh, get? Absolutely. To, uh, that's an excellent question, Radha, and it's a it's 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 a question when I go to India and Africa that I get all the time, is that um, if I have a credential already, then I I must go for a postgraduate credential. No, uh, no. Can Canada? We have a, a I mean, there are a lot of students that we have. A lot of students that we have already have de degrees. That doesn't that doesn't uh, deem you invalid for eligibility for a diploma program. You can have a degree and you can apply for a diploma. Doesn't have to be a postgraduate diploma. You will still have a very high success rate of study permit approval provided one thing. 
what you are studying makes sense and complements what you previously studied. Doesn't copy it exactly, but complements it. So let's say you studied some type of computer science and you're looking at Lakeland and go, wow, I've got a degree in computer science. There's nothing here that'll get me a study permit. That's not true. Uh, computer science is part of an industry, the computer industry, the, the, the technology industry. Technology industry needs managers, supervisors. Uh, and they need people that have experience in two things, the discipline, which is computers and the management, which is business. Two separate studies but together create a really good employee. So as long as you take something and business complements almost everything, unless you have an, unless you're copying exactly what you, what you have, you might have some, some trouble, but business always complements other things. And we always have unique offerings that tweak what you, what you currently have and are not exactly what you have. And what is, what is important in your statement of, pur of purpose, the acronym you will get familiar with as SOP, is that what you studied makes sense and is useful in your home. If you do not satisfy requirements to stay. Most students, they want to stay, uh, but if you, for some reason, fail too many courses, don't finish your program, the government wants to know that you will go back home. Or even if you graduate and can't get a job, that this was still useful on your resume back home as a leg up on your domestic camp counterparts. Completely agree with you, Paul. That definitely, uh, you know, gives the value to the student resume. Uh, yeah, well, uh, I had the question, like, in case if the student is working and then come for the post-graduation diploma, do they actually uh, get the study permit for Lakeland College? It, that rad, rada, as you know, Chuck, Chahad, um, is a matter of gap. No. Is it, isn't it a matter of gap between your last stud studies Maybe. and your future studies? Uh, I'm, the rules between gap in India, I can't remember. The last time I think it was three or five years gap. Five years, um, yes. Five yes. years. It's so a matter it, of gap. So, in fact, the work experience might, in your statement of, pur of purpose, you can put, I studied this, I worked at this. Now I want to elevate it in an international way, this. I understand that uh, this is useful back in my home because this and this and this. That's it. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that. Yeah. And now uh, we have another question. If candidate want to opt for one year interior designing program after graduation, is it available, Jill? So our interior design technology program is a two year diploma program. So we don't have an option to take one year. Um, you'd have to complete the two for the credential. Thank you. Um, I, I will just chime in here that um, in case a student is, one, is wondering that, can you study a diploma? You don't want to do the postgraduate yet. You decided, oh, maybe you want to study interior too. Sure, you were just allowed a postgraduate work permit once. So once you opt for the postgraduate work permit, be sure that you are done your studies uh, in those regards. But if you want to study again and again, uh, it's very poss possible. Thank you, Paul. And Wait just a quick shout, shout out here to Robin Ugraj Singh Dillon. Nice to meet you. Thanks for the kind com comments. Yeah, actually, I was about to <laughs> tell you the, you know, comments that provided by uh, Ms. Robin. Actually, uh, Ms. Pawan Kumar is asking that you want to ask a question directly to you, Paul. I have requested uh, them to, you know, give the question in the Q&A window. Yeah, well, the next question, if student is having less than 50% in grade 12 maths, uh, I mean, grade 12 maths, 
then can student apply on the basis of maths test yeah so a student if they um if they we do offer our entrance testing so if they aren't uh they don't have the grades that they need to apply uh to get admission then uh, we do offer our entrance testing so that's all done through lakeland college so you get that email same thing as kind of as you get the letter of admission within two to five business days usually two to three um, and we would link you up with our uh, Carly who would send you your modules and you could practice beforehand and then you would pay a small fee to actually write that admission test and that would give you the admission for your maths if you don't have the grades for it so yes thank you Chelsea I think Manisha you understood uh, the mathematics if the marks are less no problem we can go ahead and give the special admission test so after uh, the test, I um, mean, student passed in the test, we can go ahead uh, and, you know, uh, continue receiving the LOA for the student. Kindly brief, brief about program fees and eligibility and English requirements. So I hope, Rupa, we have already covered it. Um, we have three major programs uh, in business administration for January intake. And the eligibility is grade 12. Uh, mathematics is mandatory, 50% overall score. And the fees is 17,000 Canadian dollars. Application fees is 1990 Canadian dollars. And English requirement, IL score, six overall not less than each band should have six. Okay, thank you. Uh, to BDS education abroad, that's a very good point is, we, un we understand that this part of Canada isn't really well known and that, I mean, if it's a student's first time overseas, my first time overseas for a long, long time was in, uh, I've, where did I go? Pusan, Seoul, or Pusan, Korea, then Seoul, Korea, uh, the two biggest cities. So like Toronto, Vancouver, Mon Montreal, and Lakeland is saying, for, you know, don't worry about those places. Come to a smaller place where uh, actually my first job was not in Pusan. It wasn't in Seoul. It was a small town called Yang Yangsan, just outside of Pus Pusan, much, much smaller. So why should students why should students not want to go to those big metropolitan areas instead the first thing i will say is really big big cities are not truly truly representative of all of canada most canadians don't live like people in vancouver don't live like people in toronto we don't we live in smaller towns, smaller cities. So to go to these big cities and say, wow, this is Canadian life. This is Canadian big, big city life for a minority of the population, a minority of the student graduates. The majority of student graduates do not, they may go to school in Toronto. They may go to school in Vancouver. They don't live in Toronto or Vancouver after too expensive, too hard to start to start out. So we offer a very authentic Canadian experience. Uh, so that's the one thing we are, I, I believe a more authentic Canadian experience. Number two, affordability. May, tuition maybe is, is, is about this, but housing and li living prices aren't even in the same ballpark uh, that. So, how much how much it costs how realistic you are being about what it's like to live in canada in canada and uh, the third one there's just not as it's it's a lot harder to get really good jobs and opportunities in those big big towns and the last thing i will say is how long are you studying for you're studying for two years. You're studying, well, you're not, you're studying for 16, you're studying for 20 months because the last four months you're able to get a postgraduate work permit. You are not locked 
into where your, col your college is. College is about opening doors, not finding immediately or where I want to study, where I want to work, where I want to live. First part about college in Canada is opening doors. Get an education, open doors, then see where you are able to go based on the op opportunities. But for a student to go directly to Vancouver, Vancouver and say, because I studied in Vancouver, I'm going to live in Richmond Hill and uh, I'm, I'm gonna go to Stanley Park every week. Well, that's a, that's a, uh, that's a hard plan. So I would, I would tend to overlook the glamorous things at first and to look at the big picture and the long picture and that your time at Lakeland goes by like that. It goes by really fast. It's four semesters, four times four with you know, the breaks in between, which you could go travel and live in different pla places. So be mindful that, um, open your doors, get your footing into employment things before you already decide where you want to live. Because a lot of us uh, in Canada, just it's not possible to live anywhere we want. So keep that in mind. So this is a lot of information once again, Paul. Uh, I think uh, the agent BDS Education Abroad would be very, very happy to get a lot of information from you. And they can, in fact, uh, you know, transfer the same information to the student. And it's all about the, opening doors. College is all about opening doors, not deciding where you're going to build your house. Well, Paul is absolutely right. You can actually uh, tell this point to your student. Don't look at always the big colleges, uh, whereas in the small towns and small colleges also can give them, uh, you know, career opportunities in a higher way. And Paul explained his past and Chath explained how past. So by that also, you know, you can get some points to talk with your students. Thank you, Paul. My pleasure. If student not get result class 12th till now, will he or she can apply for conditional offer letter? So Jill. Yeah. Um, so uh, no, we do not um, provide conditional offer letters based on um, students completing education. Um, the only conditional offer letters that we provide at Lakeland for international students are those that are um, doing their English language um, proficiency through one of our partner schools um, here in Canada. And those are listed on our website. Thank you, Jill. What are the minimum required percentage to get admission in diploma programs? So for the, for the most part, it is 50% um, in your math, English, science, depending, of course, which school you're applying to. Um, I would encourage you, though, if you're interested in a specific program, um, to go onto the website and look at the admission requirements or feel free to email us at our international email. Thank you, Jim. Is there deferral policy in place now? So I was expecting this question, Jim. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the deferral policy, um, we don't do deferrals at Lakeland, but for the current students that are accepted for the fall, um, we are holding funds on account for those students who potentially can't make it here in the fall and who are going to be applying for January for next fall. So students are still required to submit a new application, but we're more than happy to hold their funds on account. Um, after this semester, it will be back to business as usual, we hope. Thank you, Jill. <laughs> Kindly share for online classes any additional benefit for the students like discounts or scholarships. So I will just chime in here quickly and then allow the rest of my team uh, to speak on some experience from students. Uh, 
we have per student per dollar per student we have in canada i believe one of the highest ratios of scholarships per student now that doesn't mean that we have more scholarships compared to uh, a large ontario college that has 40,000 students of course their pool of scholarships will be larger but because we are such a smaller college and our our college is so dependent on industry and so dependent on alumni alumni uh, donations and scholarships are very uh, significant for us but what you must understand is that our scholarships are based on performance in Canada performance so first year scholarship is is not really a possible or first semester scholarship isn't really a pos a possibility second semester scholarship third semester scholarship fourth semester scholarship very possible our our international students in 80 85% of our schol scholarships are available to both domestic and international. They aren't designated just for domestic or just for international. So uh, we have a lot of international students that get schol scholarships. It's not based on only academics. So that's, that's why uh, you wonder, well, if someone is really great academically, give them a, schol a scholarship. We're not a university. We are a college, which is based on factors besides just academics. Uh, participation in the community, le leadership on campus, uh, tutoring uh, opportunities on campus. So are you a really well-rounded person? How to get a scholarship is not just to get 95%. It's to get, it's harder than that. <laughs> well, no, kind of. It's 90% with a lot of... Uh, factors that show you are successful beyond the book. You have to be successful beyond the book to get a scholarship in a college. And for us, it's second semester, third semester, fourth semester. Call, uh, scholarships range from as little as $50 to I think $2,000 a semester, which means they are spread out. There's not a scholarship only for 10 students out of a huge bot of body. So uh, Jill, to have Chelsea, if you'd like to add anything else about uh, scholarships, that'd be great. No, I guess Chahat, you covered it. I covered it. Okay. Chahat, your experience with schol scholarships was fine? I did not apply for it, but there are a very um, there are a lot of options once the student is on campus. So it would be based on curricular activities, your grades, and a lot of criteria. Right, which is which is how uh, for us it's difficult to give a scholarship to a brand new student coming in because we cannot assess those what. Well, it's called, they called soft skills. Now it's essential skills, essential soft skills. So. Okay. But uh, BS, B, 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 BDS education, if you have any other questions about that, you can please just send us an email. Thank you, Paul. Could you please provide us the new program name for bachelor students? Oh, there I am. Okay, so the name for the bachelor program in the School of Agriculture, it's the Bachelor of Agricultural Technology. And the admission to that program is a two year diploma in order to um, be accepted in that. And all of the, um, the schools that we accept in Alberta um, are listed on our website. Thank you, Jill. Um, to Paul again, Doris has mentioned many thanks, Paul. Well explained. Okay, and how much gap is accepted? So um, 
it's core immigration i guess um, sir actually for ug programs it is 2 years gap and for pg programs it is 5 years gap okay again core immigration said that good answers they are very happy with that how many years of gap acceptable after 12 uh, g as i've mentioned it is it will be for ug programs 2 years gap and for pg programs 5 years gap uh, well it is regarding the pt score uh, yes pt also available a uh, student can go for pt also if candidate already completed bsc in agriculture what option we can provide to them i think there's a number of us that want to talk about this um jill you can start i can go in or the other way yeah if if a student is looking just um, to apply to one of our agriculture diplomas like paul said i mean they're all available to um potential students um if you've already completed a bachelor of science in agriculture and if you're interested in our post um credential certificate um then your option is to apply to that program and you have your degree assessed by wes um and it has to be equivalent to a four year degree Thank you, Jill. And uh, Charu Dayal, if if I if I were you, I had a bachelor of science in agriculture, and I was looking at agribusiness. You already know. You already have the ag the agriculture side, not necessarily the business side of agriculture. So agribusiness business means um, you are. If I'm if I if I'm wrong, please correct me, uh, Chelsea. You do. Uh, ag agribusiness is more the person not working on the farm, more the person working for a big industrial farm company in the office, doing the business side of agriculture. So knowing the scientific side of agriculture is great. Knowing that and the business side. <clears throat> with uh, experience makes you much more employable thank you paul is there anything other than loa and travel letter from college that i need to carry at airport this is by one of the student gracie uh do you know what Chahad, we've been dealing a lot with these questions uh, so far, and I think you are perhaps among us probably the best knowledgeable about this this question here. But besides that, not too much more. But anyway, please. So, Gracie, um, I I think you were there um, in the session on Friday. So uh, we listed all the documents that you need to carry when you travel. Um, if you have questions, you can email me. But um, from college, you can get letter of acceptance and travel letter. Thank you, Chahad. So Gracie, you understood, right? So the uh, the LOA in travel letter, what you have mentioned, that is from college, and and also if you still have any more questions, please email us. Um, I will try to you know send you the list of documents. Thank you. Uh, this is again from Doris to Paul. Here we do the Cambridge exams, and we do not require IELTS. If we have O level English with at least credit one to six, is it okay? I think I will pass. I appreciate the question, Doris. Uh, nice to see you. Well, to talk talk to you again. I've I visited Doris in Mauritius before, which was very nice. Uh, the we do ex Jill uh, Chelsea maybe talk a bit more about the English uh, different ways to sat satisfy the agreement or yeah. the uh, and this information um, it is on our website under the English language requirement. So um, one way for students to meet English proficiency 
if you are on our list of countries that are exempt from providing English proficiency, um, then yes, if a student has a B or better on their O level English, then, then that meets the requirements for English. So I hope that helps. Thank you, Jill. What is your selling point? Why should we recruit students for Lakeland College? I think I, um, like I can chime into this and then the rest can add in. Um, what does the student really want at the end of their program? What do they really want? Do they want to spend time with their family in Toronto or in Vancouver, or do they want a the best way to pursue settlement in Canada. Selling point, settlement in Canada. Uh, great programs, by provincial programs relevant to jobs, affordability. So you, you can have uh, great programs, you can have great immigration pathways, but if nobody can afford to pay for it, or if nobody can afford to get an apartment, nobody can find an apartment, nobody can afford to go get groceries, and the day-to-day -day of functioning is difficult. So for us, it's, I think, selling point, we're a very nice, easy, a nice, easy, rewarding way to get to where you want to be at the end of your program. Due to the three, the opportunity by provincial quality, I mean, you uh, low class sizes. Our rankings are high, and afford affordability. It's 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 possible. It's possible. So sell selling point. It's possible. <laughs> Anything's possible, or anything you want is possible at Lakeland. Thank you. Except for, except for computer science. Yeah, thank you. Graduate student can opt two years diploma program in Lakeland College. As long as you have a in SOP, a study plan where your previous education is making sense to your further education, uh, you can opt for a two-year diploma in Lakeland, uh, CLG. Um, I'm not sure what CLG means, but anyway, a graduate college. student. I'm sorry, a really, it's a college, CLG means, it's a shortcut. College late, Glenn. Okay, I guess a student is wondering if I, I, I think a lot of when I am over, a lot of students are worried about being overeducated. They're like, I have this, and I have this, and I have this. So how am I gonna, how am I gonna get a study permit when I show that I have this and this and this, and your program is a diploma? How am I gonna? If it's not a postgraduate. It doesn't matter, postgraduate or not. It matters if it makes sense in your trajectory of your, of your education. So it really depends on what you've studied. And as I mentioned, then why is business the, the biggest selling program in Canada of all colleges? Because it's like a fishing net. It can catch all the disciplines that aren't quite sure where they're going, but say, I need to know biz business to get into the management side of, the, of my specialty. You can be a specialist, but you might not be able to make a dollar because you don't know accounting or you don't know cash flow or you don't know human resources. 
So you need to know the academic side. You need to know the business side too. If you want to be a man, a man manager, you can't just have one or, or, or the other. And um, the government of Canada recognizes that and is granting postgraduate work permits for those types of uh, workers in the field. Thank you, thank you, Paul. Can student take online classes without having approved study permit? What is the refund policy in case the visa is refused? Uh, so core immigration, yes, a student can attend online classes. Perhaps uh, our team has already mentioned and let me just give you clarity on this quickly. Uh, we are running off of time. So um, even though study permit is not there, student can opt for online classes. The visa process should continue. Once the student receive the visa, they can they should fly immediately and reach Canada. So that is what uh, mentioned by the team. And also regarding refund policy, in case of visa refusal, before August 10th, if there is any visa refusal, still we can hold the tuition deposit and students should reapply with the application fee of 90 and then take a next intake, whichever they want to choose it, okay? College is accepting change of agent or not? Um, Paul, if you can, do you have? Um, concerning students, uh, we accept applications. Um, they're not directly tied to using an agent or not, or changing agents or not. Uh, we have some very good agents, uh, our best M Square Global, who coordinates uh, everything for us, which is nice. So I, if you're wondering about changing agents or you're not happy with the agent you're using, the information is not great, can I change? Of course you can change. Uh, you, you do not need an agent to apply to Lakeland College. You use an agent to guide you in making better decisions about your academics, your future plans, and your perhaps your study permit application. Uh, but you do not, Lakeland has no requirement to use any specific agent. Thank you, thank you, Paul. So what is the study permit success ratio or rate for Lakeland College for international students? It's a, that's a mil, million dollar question. Uh, however, uh, I would say that our study permit success is equal or higher to what is on average because we are a smaller school, pay more attention and we know what students are applying to the traje trajectory that makes that makes sense. Um, I mean, before the pan the pandemic, I I think the success rate for India was 60, 65 uh, percent. I mean, you're best asking IRCC this question as we don't grant. Uh, now, do we track it? Do we pay attention to it? I think that is what this, the person is asking. Do we pay attention to it? Of course we do, uh, but information is so skewed iffy these these days. But I would say uh, 60, 65 percent. And uh, it all depends on, again, are you taking a program that makes sense to the government for what the government wants? Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Uh, quickly, we have uh, only two questions. Can we provide any scholarships? If yes, uh, then what are the requirement, requirements for that? I hope, Jeev, this is already covered by Paul. Uh, if you have any more questions, uh, we would request you to send an email and we will cover it through email. Yeah. Is that okay, Paul? That's excellent. Uh, I'm looking, actually, I'm looking one question. <laughs> But Rajni uh, Kogna's question actually is very is a very good 
question and a relevant quest question. Um, and Jill, maybe you can mention what are the university transfer options? I mean, I can pull this, the prospectus here. There are uh, a myriad of business, arts, sciences, medicine, nursing. I mean, you can easily start your program at Lakeland and then take your two years or one year and then transfer to bigger, if, if, you, if you would like, more prestigious uh, institutions. If that's, what you, if that's what you would like, just keep in mind that when you are in a university transfer program at your initial place, let's say you want to do, um, um, okay, I'm not gonna go through this, but let's say you wanna go through a, a four year program. You wanna do two years at Lakeland, two years at the University of Alberta. Those first two years at the university, I mean, first two years here, you are not getting a credential. You're not getting a diploma from Lakeland. We're not, we're offering the programs of that place. So technically, you may never graduate. So you are not able to work off campus. Um, you have a study permit, you can work on campus. If you're not getting a paper, a certificate, a diploma, you cannot get a postgraduate work permit with that. So you cannot go to Lakeland for two years, get a uh, a trans a, get a transcript and just with your transcript get a postgraduate work permit work for a couple of years then finish up at U of A uh, you no know, because you're not getting the credential you need a credential to get a postgraduate work permit you need to graduate from somewhere you are never graduating two years out of a four year. Pro program, you're only halfway done. So keep in mind whether you're locking yourself in for two years or four years. What I always say is why not get the diploma first, uh, do the permanent residency, then go study after at, at the permanent residency price. Thank you. Thank you so much, Paul. Um, well, um, all to all the agents, um, you know, we are very thankful and thank you Lakeland team. And I hope this is, uh, you know, a very valuable and good session I uh, have ever seen. We have extended our time uh, another 20 minutes. Okay. Lakeland team supported a lot. Every, each one of you, uh, Jill, Chelsea, Paul, Chahat explained very well. So, I'm sorry, Paul. Uh, no, uh, thank you so so much. Uh, as usual, it is a it is a pleasure for us to uh, to to do these things, um, to connect, to to talk. Uh, it's a very rough time for us for us all, but it's it it's looking like the horizon is there. Um, so with let's keep uh let's keep being safe uh and if it's within your thoughts uh please get the vac the vaccine and uh let's look forward to a bright future thank you paul hi yeah. ben good evening <laughs>